Hello YouTube. Um, what I'm planning on doing here in this video is, I guess you could say this is going to be similar to what you may have heard of uh, haul videos where people show things they've uh, purchased on a recent shopping trip, but uh, I hope this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, this is not going to be a Target or a mall haul trip uh, video. Um, just came back from the Renaissance Fair last weekend and just wanted to show a few things that uh, we picked up from there, my wife and I, um, and just to sort of uh, promote these vendors that work really hard every year out. These Renaissance Fairs, they typically travel around the country, um, so it's kind of a lifestyle for them, really. So well, let me just zoom out a little bit here. What I've got here is just the... Uh, the map that they give out with the schedule printed on the back every year. Uh, just to give you an idea, um, by the way, this uh, particular Renaissance Fair that I go to is in North Carolina, in Huntersville, at the western part of the state, just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so let's take a look at this map here. Uh, you've got the entrance right here. And uh, it typically uh, opens about 10 o'clock in the morning. They do a little special uh, introduction ceremony, fire a cannon off, which is pretty cool. So you've got your entrance in here, and this will give you kind of a general idea of the layout of the Renaissance Fair. It's a very large uh, grounds that they have there. It's a permanent site for the Renaissance Fair. I don't, I don't know how many years they've been out here, but uh, it's a permanent site. They've got fixed concrete buildings out there. so. The layout's the same every year, so you know once you start going, you, you know the general. Uh, you, you about know where everything's laid out. It doesn't take long to get used to it. So I'm just gonna sort of pan the camera up here. Uh, da Vinci flying machine. That's sort of a a kitty ride they've got out there. Royal Pavilion. Minstrels Roost. Uh, we like to hang out there a lot and hear the live music that they have. Here's one of the show stages here, the palace stage. They've got a lot of uh, other attractions like games and whatnot, uh, knife throwing, this Jacob's Ladder is a little game they have out there. There's another one of the performance stages they have. Voyage to the New World, I believe that's another one of the uh, kid rides out there. The Green Man, yes. Uh, they've got this guy out there every year on uh, a huge, huge tree costume. Very, very neat to see. The kids usually get a kick out of that, but so do the adults. Um, you can watch glass blowers at work which is always very cool. They've got adult beverages at several of the vendors. And yes, of course, what Renaissance Fair uh, would be complete without the Joust Tournament. Again, they, there's another one of the performance stages. They have a lot of good uh, regular performances out there. They usually have a lot of the same performers every year. Yes, they actually have camel rides. The blacksmith booth over there. You can watch a real blacksmith at work, which is very neat. As you can see there, they do have ATM machines as a lot of the vendors take cash, but uh, as the years go by, more and more of them do take credit cards, so that's always good. And I believe that's the end of the loop. So you can see the fair sort of comes up, follows a path up and around, and sort of almost spirals back in on itself. So it's, it's um, you won't get lost. And then on the back... Um, they give you a good schedule of all the events that take place at each of the each of the stages out there. So uh, that is the 
little map and flyer that they hand out every year. And so I guess I'll move on at this point to uh, the little thing, the things we've taken back, we've purchased at the fair this year. Uh, I think I'm going to start off with a little bit of the, we actually bought some art prints this year. Um, artist that does these, it goes by the name of Ruth Thompson. She has a website at redrueart.com. I'll put the link to her website down in the in the section below. Well, here's one of the prints. She does, I guess I should go ahead and say, uh, she does fantasy art. And uh, I read her website. And she's done uh, artwork for the game RPG industry. And she's actually done artwork for a few magic cards, in fact. So she sells prints, um, starting off smaller size than even this. I'm not sure what size this is off the top of my head, but she's, and she sells very large prints as well. You know, full poster size prints that um, some of them she's already even has them framed, or you can get them framed on your own, uh, whatever your preference is. So here's uh, a fairy print we bought this year. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can get a good view of that. It's covered in a uh, plastic wrap, so I apologize for any of the uh, sheen coming off of it. And yes, it is a nude fairy, but what do fairy needs clothes? What do fairies need clothes for, anyways? Don't know of any fairy dress codes that exist. And this is one I purchased for my brother for. Uh, early Christmas present. Well, this will will be come a Christmas present. She does a lot of dragon artwork as well, which is very cool. I'll just pan down this a little bit so you can hopefully get a good idea of what it looks like. And you can see it's got a cardboard frame right now, and. You can either, you know, buy a frame from this at a you know, local Target or somewhere like that to get a cheap frame or get a nice frame, depending on your taste. Or you could actually just leave it in the cardboard frame and just, uh, you know, sort of uh, put something like a double-sided tape or a Velcro or something on the back and just stick it on your wall. Then uh, I've got one more thing that we purchased from this booth, and this is for myself. She sells t-shirts as well. And this is a dragon covered t-shirt. I'm not sure what the name of this piece is, but let's just see if I can pan down that and try not to see if we can get a little bit better lighting on that. Not sure if you can make it out, but it's got lots of little tiny dragons on it as well. And what you'll probably want to do with a shirt like this, you can tell the kind of printing they've done on it. As long as you turn this sort of shirt inside out before you wash it, I'm sure the the pr I'm hoping the printing is going to last a good while on it. And she's even got her signature down there at the bottom. So I thought that was pretty cool. So next up, um, one of the booths we visit every year, my wife really, really likes, it's called the Bronze Jewelers. And what they make, they make a lot of uh, other items as well, but the main thing my wife likes that they produce uh, are these metal hair sticks. And this is a new one she got this year. They've got tons of designs. And once again, I'll put their uh, website below. So this has sort of a unique spiral look. They had another one that was similar to this but a, it had a tighter spiral and had like a an orb enclosed in the spiral. 
And the great things, the thing about these is that you can bend them. So in case you need to space this out more or uh, do whatever you need to do to get it to work with your type of hair, whether it's thin or thick or whatnot. And what they'll also do is um, they actually offered to clip this short for my wife in case they it didn't work out, but uh, she said that this would probably work for her. And you can see the ends. Let's see if I can get the autofocus to work here. The ends are rounded off there so they don't snag on your hair. So, uh, yeah, my wife is building up a collection of these very nice... Uh, handcrafted hair pieces. You can see where that's rounded off at that end too. And again that's Bronze Jewelers and it's the name of that vendor. Uh, next up I've got a, a pottery item here. Uh, this is from Aberson Pottery. Now apparently they're relatively new to the Renaissance Fair. Uh, apparently they've been out there about two or three years. Uh, we used to buy pottery from uh, the previous vendor. We didn't realize the vendors had changed as we hadn't purchased anything in the past couple of years. Um, what I bought this year was this uh, this little honey pot. And I'll just take the lid off here. And you can see it comes with this to get the honey out here and it's got even a in case you ever wanted to uh, just or needed to just straight up pour your honey out it's got a little lip there it's got a very nice uh, sort of blue glaze to it which I really like and they did sort of a little pattern here along the top and it's signed at the bottom by Joyce Branch and everything they make apparently is uh, dishwasher safe microwave or microwave safe so that that's really neat you wouldn't uh, expect that from uh, handmade pottery like this um, so very very practical item uh, we go through a lot of honey from tea and other than baking recipes and such so this is going to come in very handy for me and I've got one more item but I just realized I need to go get it okay I'm back next item I've got here is um it's pretty neat this is actually going to be a gift for uh mother-in-law this is a uh, called a manganol and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right but uh, this is from a vendor at the fair uh, uh, Siege Siege the Day and they make miniature uh, I don't know if I call it replica but uh, Siege machinery they make uh, catapults um, trebuchets all sorts of things from really little ones like this to uh, pretty large ones um, you can look at their website and check out all they've got pictures of all the models that they have and it's pretty cool at the Ren Fair what they'll do is uh, they launch marshmallows at passerbys to uh, sort of get their attention have them walk over and come check them out and uh, this one the way this one works is the way attention is uh, applied to this is through torsion. And I don't know if you can see here, but there's a rope twisted around and around right there. And on each side, I've got a little stick like that where the rope is twisted around on each end. And what you do, if you want to tighten or loosen the rope, you just lift this up either do it by hand or get a tool to help you out with it to uh, tighten or loosen that depending on if you want it to launch farther or be a little bit lighter and you got your little indentation there to put your projectile in and you just flick and fire and so 
neat little toy there. Uh, I believe this is made out of poplar wood, if I'm not mistaken. And again, that siege the day that uh, that makes these little guys. And let's see if I can pull it back all the way so you can hear how. You can really get some uh, distance with these. I think mother-in-law's thinking about using uh, Hershey's Kisses, launching those at her students. So I'm sure she'll have a lot of fun with that. And last but not least, there is a vendor out there that this is our first year actually seeing this vendor. Um, this guy makes uh, mead horns. Um, his store is called Where the Gods Live. And uh, he's got a couple websites. He's got a Facebook page. It's called Where the Gods Live Crafts. And then he's got a Etsy store that's just Where the Gods Live. So uh, our name is uh, Brian Marshall. And uh, here is the horn in all its glory. And these are carved horns, by the way. These aren't just plain horns. All of his, I believe all of the horns he sells are carved. I don't remember seeing any uncarved ones there. But he gives you a really nice leather belt loop right there to attach it to. And let me just uh, take that off so you can see the carving on here. God does a really good job. Let's see if I can get in on that. See the rune work around the uh, outer border there. And the trefoil in the middle. And it's a decent sized horn too. I mean, you can see my hand here compared to it. It's a pretty good length horn. And uh, we talked to him for a minute and talked to one of his assistants out there. And really nice people. Told us about how to take care of it and whatnot. Um, apparently you don't want to use anything too abrasive on it. Um, I believe some people might use uh, beeswax and stuff like that. Uh, but the best way to clean it, he said, is actually to drink your alcohol out of it um, because alcohol is and it's antiseptic so that's actually what I plan on doing with this in just a few moments here so I will be right back hey YouTube I'm back and I'm gonna try out this uh, mead horn I'm gonna break it in here and what I'm gonna try it out with is I just got this from Trader Joe's tonight um, Trader Joe's, if you've never been there, they sell individual beers of, a, they carry a lot of different brands, and I'm just recently getting into beer, so that's pretty good for me, because I get to try out lots of different kind of beers without having to buy an entire six-pack of something. Um, what I've got here is called Old Rasputin Russian Imperial Stout. So, the guy, uh... The source said this was one of his favorites, so we'll see. And got the trusty mead horn here. Okay, I think that'll do. Don't think I got too much of a head on it. Bottoms up. Oh, and by the way, I believe you're supposed to drink a mead horn with the tip pointing towards you, if I'm not mistaken. That's really good. Well, 
believe that'll be it. So uh, again, I'll have the links for all the vendors below. Check them out. Uh, a lot of them take online orders, and I'm sure they'd be uh, glad for your support. And apparently I have a cat that wants to get drunk with me. That'll be fun. Have a good night.